Hey there, it's time for Dreamcatcher, the program where you can find peace through understanding the meaning of your dreams. I'm your host, Robin Hardin. On today, my first time guest, Pam, is an avid kayaker. See how the Lord uses her real life hobby to relay some real important messages in her life. Plus, this is another opportunity for you to listen in on a conversation I have with a guest. You're going to enjoy the conversation between Cynthia and I. Well, I actually had heard about you through Lana Shoulders at Shepherd's House of Praise. Oh, okay. You were going to go in Elkton, Kentucky, mm -hmm. and you were going to go there. I didn't get a chance to make it then, uh, but I had had, I've been having a few dreams, and I was kind of wondering what they're about, and it's, um, I love that the idea that we're here, I had no clue that the river was behind us, uh, but one of our dream, my dreams is um, when I was in one of the dreams, I was floating the river, and um, actually, there was in, there was a little boy that I had seen. Um, I don't know how old the, the kid was, but I had seen him, and he was in the middle of the river. And um, and I remember telling him uh, he was trying to he wanted to he really really wanted to float the river in a kayak, and I had one, and um, and it was actually a, a friend of mine who owns a kayak business. And uh, but and I told him, and I says, well, you can get in the river if you'd like. And I said, and we can kayak together. And he said, okay. Well, I decided not to float. And I had told him he could go by himself, but he needed to make sure to be very careful and, um, and not to leave or let me know where he may be at. Well, he couldn't get in the kayak. Well, somehow, instead of being on the bank, we were actually in the middle of the river and the water was like clear up to my like to my chest part it wasn't rough it was really 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 smooth um, but he finally got in the river and he floated off and that's all I remember and then I dreamed that um, I had another person that wanted to float um, and we were in she wanted to float in a canoe because she can't get in a kayak and she wanted to float in the canoe and I was in the kayak. Well, she started floating doing pretty good by herself Well, she got to the point where she couldn't float anymore. And when after she, um, we got her out of the kayak, I got out of my kayak and I put it up on the bank and then she stayed in the canoe and we wound up having to take the, uh, we went on a, a little bit down the river and with the canoe. And we, then she was like, I'm ready to go home. And then we had to drag our boats up this, it was a bank, it was the grass and everything. And then all, the next thing I see is these huge sea turtles. It was like a wall that was built of these turtles. And I couldn't get away from them. They kept coming after me. And every, and I would wake up and when I would wake up, it, I'd go right back to sleep and that's all I seen with these turtles coming after me. And I don't know what that means, if there's anything that meaning of that. Uh, but that is one of the dreams. And then I have another dream that I just had recently that I... Okay. Well, let's start with these two because they're related. Yeah. Okay. Many times in a dream, an unidentified young boy is represents the prophetic mm -hmm. and the river is almost always the Holy Spirit that's the river that's the water mm -hmm. and you're in the water and you're in the Holy Spirit and God has sent you a prophetic gift that wants to get in with you mm -hmm. and you think that he can do it himself but but God and God can but he uses people he uses us and he wants you to be available and when you finally realized, okay, I'm going to help this prophetic. That's you opening up. You opened up your boat, your kayak. Mm -hmm. um, you told me earlier that you do kayak a lot. Mm -hmm, I do. And so a lot of times people dream about a house and the house is them, but this is, this is your ministry. This is who you are. You are on that serene, you know, kayaking mm -hmm. uh, on the Holy Spirit. And he wants you to open up and allow the prophetic in. And, and even in the dream, the, the prophetic kind of went off on his own, but that shows that he, it, the freedom. Mm -hmm. Once you um, realize that God really has a prophetic call on your life, it, it'll just float freely. And then you have another dream 
kind of the same. It's mm -hmm. the same, you know, the river and, and the other person. Once you opened up to the prophetic, then the Lord sent you someone else that wanted to get on and wanted to be on in the boat and in the Holy Spirit. Now, this person is not going to be able to, it's not going to come as easy for them as it does you. Mm -hmm. It's, um, you're just a natural at it. Even even if you haven't opened up for that prophetic gift yet, it's going to be so natural for you because it's what God has for you. Mm -hmm. um, the other person, it's important that you know it may not necessarily be that person, but it's what that person represents in, in your dream, in your life. Mm -hmm. And um, But you have, very, you have patience with this person. You got out of the kayak, which was the most comfortable for you, to get in something that was more comfortable for her. Um, you even, there was a struggle to get back, you know, get back on the land for her. Um, but God is showing you that He sees your heart, mm -hmm. that you're not, um, you're not impatient. You're not, well, I want to go down this river and I want to do it the way I'm used to. You, mm -hmm. you put someone else's needs ahead of yours. Mm -hmm. and then at the end, the turtles, turtles are ancient. They're, they've been around hundreds of years. And that represents, um, in this particular case, because they're threatening, mm -hmm. it represents tradition and mm -hmm. things that we've thought and we've been taught for hundreds of years, you know, through the generations, mm -hmm. that um, in the first dream it was new and fresh and the new young boy mm -hmm. and the freedom, but the enemy wants to stop that, especially when he sees that you're using that gift to help other people. Until today, have you felt like you had a prophetic call? Is this totally new to you? or? I think I, I kind of do. Um, I know that um, I have been called to uh, intercessory prayer for a fact. Something else, I'm not sure. Um, maybe music. Um, and I think Lena would say music as well. Um, but other than that, I don't think of any, I can't think of anything else maybe. Okay. I know Lana is very open to the prophetic. She moves in those mm -hmm. gifts. And um, you know you can play music prophetically mm -hmm. as well. And I, I, would, I would encourage you to ask the Lord, what does this look like? Because if, if, if I could draw the little boy in your dream and the little boy in someone else's dream, even though they both represented the prophetic, he would look different. Yeah. And so ask the Lord, how does that look in your life? Mm -hmm. What is the prophetic? Maybe it is, maybe it is um, music. But intercessory prayer, mm -hmm. if you're praying for someone and you're called to be an intercessor, you know how deep that is. Mm -hmm. And sometimes if you, and you may already do this, but if you just kind of let go, you'll find yourself praying things that you really have no way of knowing. That's a prophetic gift, because you're prophesying and you're praying over their life specifically. So it, this dream is really talking to you, and, and if you're already doing that, I believe the Lord wants you to be more free with it. Let it mm -hmm. flow. Let that little boy get in that boat mm -hmm. and just float mm -hmm. because you're going to need it especially for those people in the second dream who aren't able to float that you're going to need to help right. even more so I'm, and that makes good. that makes sense because um, the person that it is that was in the I seen her I mean she was I seen her face I know exactly who it is and, um, and and you're right she does need she needs lots of prayer and and someone to talk to her and mm -hmm. someone yeah. with patience yeah. someone that can see in the spirit realm to know mm -hmm. there's more going on here yeah there um, is and and you have that discernment mm -hmm. and you have that patience that comes with that and mm -hmm. you know it's going to be a struggle and you know the enemy is going to come but you're still thinking about her <laughs> yeah this is autumn. It's my favorite time of year mm -hmm. because the leaves could literally dry up, blow away, and be gone. They're only colorful because God loves us. Amen. I mean, that's, there's no reason for them to be colorful. They're colorful because God loves us. 
and he he gave us this the sun does not have to be beautiful when it goes down and comes up it doesn't have to but it is it's gorgeous but it is he's the little animals that he gave us yes. you know and every kind of little free cutest little things you've ever seen mm -hmm. in your life and they just do the cutest things and mm -hmm. you're thinking this has got to be a god this, mm -hmm. this is nothing that crawled out of the ocean and right. became right. this beautiful little creature right it's and we have to choose to see that and, and have that much to love. see that right there's such beauty around us there's such miraculous things every day every day has a miracle yes. but we have to choose to see it and so many of us just don't choose to see it well, I pray to God that I see everything, every beautiful yeah. thing in this world from yeah. this day forward, everything. Yeah. Amen. Hey there, I have something very exciting I want to share with you. The new Dreamcatcher Journal. It's geared to help you catch your dreams with over 50 scriptures, inspirational words, and revelations, all pointing to dreams and dream interpretation. In the back, there's a quick reference to help you with colors. Maybe you keep waking up at the same time or you have a favorite number that follows you. 44 different time scriptures, I call them, to help you find out what it is the Lord is saying to you straight from the Bible symbols that you can compare your dreams with and find the scripture that might help you interpret your dream in addition there's a hundred and ninety five different symbols from past dream interpretations that will help you to catch your dream order yours today A little later in the program, Cynthia and I continue our discussion. We talk about the seasons in our lives and even some thoughts on angels. I want you to remember the dream that Pam had in the beginning of the program. Remember the Lord was showing her how to pray protection and intercede for other people. But sometimes the Lord shows you people's hidden agendas and their deception so that you can pray for your own protection. And then just the other night, I had another dream. It wasn't about the river, but this lady was there. Um, same lady? Same lady. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um, and a guy that I kayak with all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was in a house that has actually, when I, f um, with my first marriage, we had gotten, we lived in. I seen a lot of people that were kind of in and out of the driveway. So I decided to go inside, and when I walk up on the back porch, I walk into the door, Just I remember it, just like it used to be set up, and I saw the lady that I was talking about in the first dream, and she was standing at the kitchen sink, and she was washing dishes, and she turned around, and she said, well, how, how are you? And we spoke for a minute. Well, I walked into the living room, and I saw um, her son there, um, and but he wasn't his age. He, um, he was an old man. He looked very, very, very old. Um, and in the living room where he was sitting, he had some family members there that, um, that I could see clearly who they were. And, and I asked, um, and while I was sitting there, there was a, a lady that came by and, and I, was, I asked her what she was doing there. And she says, well, I'm going to go with this guy and we're going to go on a date. And I was like, really? And I wasn't sure what, why he was doing that. So I walk out through the hallway and I go out onto the front porch. And by the time I get to the front porch, um, the guy was on a four-wheeler with a with a, like a wagon behind it and he um, he was sitting there and I says what are you talking about and then next thing I see is my aunt coming out the door and my aunt looks at me and she says uh, she asked him she said where is the ring are you not going to be engaged and he said I've told you time and time again I'm not getting engaged and um and then my aunt turns and looks at me, and he just, she just starts laughing hysterically. Like, and then I remember going in front of, and at this time we're going around the corner of the house, and I remember getting in front of them. And I looked at my aunt, and I says, why do you have to lie to me? I don't understand. And she's, uh, and all she could do was laugh. 
Well, when we get around the corner, I just happen to look up and they're still on the ATV and I happen to look up and I see this tractor coming at me. And it looked like he was disking up the ground. But on the tractor was my grandfather that's been gone for a very long time. Um, and and he, he about hits me with the tractor and then I wake up. There's a lot going on in this dream. Mm -hmm. And it's there's a lot of generations in the dream. Mm -hmm. So God is talking to you about generations, things, mm -hmm. people that have come in and out of your life mm -hmm. through the generations. When you think about the dream with the turtles that we had yes. earlier, that was tradition and things from the old time ago. And so that, in that sense of the dreams, these connect. Mm -hmm. A lot of what we were raised with many times were lies. Mm -hmm. um, not necessarily that people meant to, but people, you know, we believe what we were taught and it goes, it goes down from there. However, and your aunt, again, doesn't necessarily mean it's her. It can mean someone in your family. Um, not immediate family, but you know, next to kin, you know, like your aunt would be. So keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. um, and it's interesting that you said, "How? Why did you lie to me?" Because when she didn't really say anything, but you knew by the laugh it was deception, and deception is lies. So the Lord is showing you there's been a lot of deception passed down uh, in your family by one or more, and even when we don't know it affects us, it does. Mm -hmm. In the dream, there's a, a young man that should be a young man. He's very, very old. How can this be her son? But heaven says, the Bible says heaven doesn't have male or female, Jew or Gentile. And so he's showing you that our sons, our children, are not always who we bear our children with. This woman uh, in your dream, she can have... God wants her to have sons in the spirit. She, he wants mm -hmm. her to have followers that, that she brings into the kingdom, mm -hmm. you know, that would be her spiritual son. He wants that for her. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know, I have no idea who we're talking about, but I have a feeling um, she's not there yet. Mm -hmm. And that maybe that's why God is putting her in two of your dreams now. Mm -hmm. You've put her on the water, you've got her floating, you've taken a lot of time with her, and mm -hmm. now, you know, you, you want to be careful that you don't pass on lies and deception that has come through the generations uh, onto her. You want to make sure you drop, you break that um, so that she can have sons and daughters in the spirit, in the faith. The, um, unfortunately, there's another deception going on because the girl, the woman who's going on a date, it thinks that she's going to be engaged. She thinks there's a ring involved, and and yet he doesn't. So that's talking about relationships mm -hmm. um, th that are very one-sided sometimes. Mm -hmm. And we have to be so careful that when we don't become the busybody. But mm -hmm. the Lord has given you a discernment that you will, especially in relationships, that you will kind of have a knowledge that the people may not necessarily have and because of that knowledge and that goes back to the prophetic again mm -hmm. that's a prophetic gift um, because of that gifting that you have you he's going to place you in people's lives that you can kind of help with that I like in the fact that you confronted your aunt you went right mm -hmm. to the source and said why did you lie mm -hmm. so that's important that we are able to confront when it's just deliberate, uh, not just deception, but that laughing is is kind of a intimidation method. Mm -hmm. It's belittling, and um, mm -hmm. you put an end to that. And and you don't have to answer this other than to yourself. But if there's any of that that has been passed down through your family to you, you need to address it with the, you know, in the spirit and break that curse. Those are word curses and they have no place in your life. Mm -hmm. And that could be one of those turtles okay. coming after you. You need to break those curses mm -hmm. and any type of deliberate or even, even um, subconsciously someone belittling you, uh, deceiving you. Break that, that effect that it has over your life because God wants to use you 
in that very area in other people's lives that you can bring truth to them you can bring light to them and uh, there's a lot of deception going on your aunt's deceiving and and laughing in a in a not humorous way a, a, a cruel way yes. uh, this guy is obviously leading this woman on um, he's too old to be her son there's a lot a deception going on mm -hmm. and it's there's a lot of family members in this in this work employees self you know um, people you co-workers yeah. in the dream too so um, I think God wants to use your work situation as a mission field for you and um, He's already given you the gift, and it's going to be easy. Like your chaos, your kayaking, it should be comfortable. When you, when you just let down your guard and let it happen, it would just flow. It will be easy. You will have a discernment, and you will be able to, in the correct way, help people from getting into relationships that aren't aren't good ones. Pam lives in Kentucky, and yet she works in Tennessee. Unfortunately, the studios here at Dreamcatcher is about an hour in the opposite direction for her travels. And yet we found a way that we could meet. We met in a park so she could be a guest. If you're considering being a guest on Dreamcatcher, it's best, obviously, if you could come to the studio, but contact me. Maybe we can work something out, even if we have to meet in a park. Love Autumn. But and things are laid down. You've laid down things in your life where you felt dead. You've laid things down. And then winter comes and that's long and cold and harsh and you know, but then spring comes. What seemed to be dead is now alive. Amen. And then summer is summer is vacation and that abundance and, and it's just, it's you know, there are seasons because after summer comes fall again. <laughs> you know. Okay. But right now I believe that you are entering into a, a summer season spiritually and so just soak in the sun and soak in those blessings and just receive Amen. them because as long as we're on earth the seasons are going to come back around. <laughs> I <laughs> need to hear promise. that because I was feeling like I was in the middle of winter and I was feeling like everything was just dying I think winter, ha I think you have been but I think I think you're entering spring which is new life and fresh, you know, it smells and, mm -hmm. and things that seem dead. You know, when those little seeds were in the ground, they seem dead, but in the spring they come back out. You know, if you have a bulb, yes. you know, like dan uh, what are those daffodils and things, they're gone, but they're not really. They come back up every year, year after year. I think, you're, right. I think your long cold winter is coming to an end and you're entering spring. Well, thank you, God, because I've waited so long for that to come about because Oh, I know Satan's a liar. I yes. know he tries to give us false reports all the time. Yes. And, and uh, I, I'm fighting back, and, mm -hmm. and God, I've got God on my side, mm -hmm. and as long as I've got God on my side, I can conquer anything. And he's putting people in your life to help bring that encouragement and that hope, and, and to help you toward a goal, a desire of your, of your heart. Praise God. That's You're awesome. such a blessing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to be honest with you. I'm preparing to, to minister tomorrow. Uh -huh. And much of what I have studied today is what we've talked about today. My message is going to be on seeds and seasons. That's the title of it, seeds and seasons. And, and how, you know, the devil thought Jesus was dead. It was a long, cold winter, you know, for the disciples, those, those three days. That must have seemed like a long time. The king was gone, their friend yes. was gone, all these promises are gone, they thought. And what seemed to be dead. And it's scary too. Came back. Yeah. Oh, confusion, fear, people are being killed, people are being tracked down. Mm -hmm. That's a long cold winter for them. And then all of a sudden spring came and there he is. There was that life morning. again. I can't imagine. So please come back, Jesus. <laughs> we need you. But then think of the book of Acts. That was the summer. You know, spring came because he came back to life. And then the book of Acts was summer. They walked in miraculous times. Yeah. And people came to know the Lord and by the thousands. And that was summer. You know, that was summertime. But then after yeah. summer comes fall. And, you know, and it just yes. it makes the cycles. It, they, it, I just read a scripture in Genesis that says, that cold and and 
cold and winter and summer will, you know, will, always, will always follow. It's, it's His promise. So the seasons are actually a promise to us from the Lord. We would sometimes prefer to skip some of them, <laughs> but yeah, so but skip the, winter altogether. <laughs> okay, I'll, Lord, I'll take the fall mm -hmm, and spring and mm -hmm. the summer, but please get, leave the winter out of it. But you know, we have to have winter because mm -hmm. it kills out all the germs mm -hmm. and the bacteria mm -hmm. and all the bad things, so that everything can come back mm -hmm. fresh and new. And I know mm -hmm. that. And it's even in the north, way North America, the snow melting actually helps to irrigate the land, yes. so the land is prepared to to be planted again in the spring. So just because it looks dead, just because it feels long and cold and harsh, He promises spring. He promises that to us. Amen. It's so crazy because I'm, I'm on Facebook and I get a message and I answer it as if it came yesterday. I messaged you on uh, Facebook last year interpret the dreams um, and never got back and uh, this last dream that I had had I actually I had messaged you again and asked you to be a friend on Facebook and I had said that I had some dreams I'd like you to interpret and you didn't um, you didn't know that I had sent you any messages um, that, or anything and you, you said you were gonna have to look back just to see but you said you never received those <laughs> so I go and I look in and these messages came almost a year ago. This is yes, March, March, and it, it was, was March when I said that. I think that's crazy. So, crazy. <laughs> so I feel like the Lord is yeah. His timing is perfect. is diff is perfect. His, yes. That's great. It's perfect. It's it's not ours. No. It's perfect. So if you have a dream, it doesn't matter how old it is. God God lets you remember mm -hmm. those because it wasn't finished. Right. And He wanted you to receive the answer. But I I can't help but think that perhaps you're ready for the answer now and maybe last year you weren't mm -hmm. so he knows what he's doing mm -hmm. he does <laughs> i lost a granddaughter before her first birthday and it was a year after her passing that i went to a counselor and i walked in the room and he said why are you here and first of all i said because i don't want to cry every day mm -hmm. and then i said I just need to be honest with you, I don't think you can help me. Yeah. And I'm only coming be so my family so I can tell my family that I did. Yeah. But and I mean he just he just sat back, he was a Christian and he just kinda listened and he and he helped me more than I ever would have imagined someone could help me. Yeah. I mean angels mean messenger you know that's what the word angel means and sometimes our, me our, our angels or messengers are humans they're not heavenly beings and sometimes we entertain angels and we don't know but sometimes I think the word angel messenger God can use any of us as a messenger Next time on Dreamcatcher, I'll introduce a brand new guest, Debbie. She's a hard-working woman, and yet her dreams are all about the Lord telling her that she needs to slow down. She needs to rest in His peace. She needs to have a cup of coffee. The messages in her dreams are directed just to her, but they're for you as well. I encourage you to watch. If you feel like you're torn in a hundred directions, you'll want to watch next week. Mm -hmm.